Welcome back. You are tuning in to Traders Nation. My pleasure to have with us here today book author Kim Phillips Fine. Uh, she authored Invisible Hands, the Making of the Conservative Movement from the New Deal to Reagan. Kim, welcome to Traders Nation. How are you today? Good. Thanks so much for having me on the show. Oh, you're more than welcome. And in your research, when, when do you feel that the conservative movement started? Well, I trace it back to the 1930s, and this is different than what a lot of historians do who really see it growing out of the 60s and the backlash against the um, the civil rights, feminist, yeah. anti-war movements of that decade. Yeah. I argue that you really have to see it coming out of the 30s and that the reaction against the New Deal and the changes that the New Deal brought about are kind of at the heart of the conservative project. Yeah. throughout the whole 20th century. All right. What, what is the New Deal? Not everybody knows. Mm-hmm. Not everyone knows what that is. I mean, there was something that really got people to stand up, band together, and, and, and kind of have this conservative movement started. Right. Well, the New Deal, the New Deal kind of it refers to the uh, responses of the Roosevelt administration yeah. to the Great Depression. And I think... It, it's actually, I mean, I use it in the book, and in some ways I think that the businessmen that I write about see it as something that kind of even goes beyond what the government was doing. Right. Um, but the New Deal, you know, we, they, they see it as this broad program of government intervention in the economy. I mean, the New Deal includes programs like Social Security, the Wagner Act, which made it legal for yeah. unions to organize, the creation of financial regulations, such as and, and, and organization, you know, institutions like yeah. the Securities and Exchange Commission, that guarantees some basic level of transparency on Wall Street. It includes the creation of a federal minimum wage and maximum hour law, yeah. and all of these, and, and and also the kind of the beginning of some kind of federal uh, welfare programs for people who are. Um, unable to participate in the market. And so it, it includes all these different kinds of programs and many, many others. At the time, it included major public works programs. Yeah. Um, and all of this is kind of a response to the Great Depression. Kim, now, if we didn't put a date to this, it would almost sound like we're describing exactly what is going on today in, in the United States. Um do we have potentially a, a reemergence of the new New Deal with conservatives? Because, you know, conservatives really have been pushed aside. The Republican Party's done that. Mm-hmm. Democrats don't care about conservatives. In fact, they hate them in some, in some circles. So um, maybe will this be a resurgence of conservatism, okay. considering the amount of social programs and government expansion, printing money out the, out the, out the you-know-what? I mean, uh, well, I actually think that there are some really important differences between the New Deal and what we see happening in Washington today. Yeah, what are they? I, well, I think one thing is that the New Deal in the 30s, uh, one of its central pillars was an, an expansion of the labor movement and of labor unions. And I, I don't think that we see that happening uh, today in the same no. way Obama has really done very little to promote the major piece of union legislation, the Employee Free Choice Act, which yeah. would make it easier for workers to join unions. He has not kind of done that much to back that at this point. I also think that the uh, there was a much deeper willingness to criticize business during the 30s and during the original New Deal yeah. than we see today yeah, with the Obama administration. So I think in a lot of ways what we're seeing today is different from the New Deal. On the other hand, I think um, if, if you know if the economic crisis continues, if the economic crisis deepens, we may see more of a move towards something that you know resembled the New Deal yeah. in a modern context. We may see that, Kim. And, we may see that, Kim. And, and and the reason why I say this is because capitalism on a worldwide basis is under attack. It really is. I see signs in the UK: socialists, uh, socialist workers against capitalism. Capitalism has failed. And it's spreading and spreading, take it basically taking advantage of an economic downturn in some areas harder than mm-hmm. others. Yeah, I mean, I think, it, and I, I think, I, I do think that the political organizations and the impulse yeah. of these businessmen that I talk about in the book 
I think if we do see a move to the left, it will be met with a very sharp reaction from the right and we in, in a kind of resurgence of conservatism. Yeah. And I should make it clear, you know, I think that the changes that were brought about by the New Deal were, you know, very positive for American society and for the American economy and that the post-war American economy with its strong labor unions and, um, you know, we, the United States never had a very strong welfare state, really, but the, the welfare state programs that were created, like Social Security, yeah. that those things did create a more equal and fair uh, economy and permitted a sort of economic growth that was more equally distributed than what we've seen in the past 30 years when those when unions have been under attack and when we've had deregulation of um, the economy in different in different ways. All right. So, so, so I, I personally think that the changes brought about by the New Deal were very positive. And I think another kind of part of the book is that it suggests that the conservative movement was much less genuinely populist than people often think it is. Yeah. All right. So let's let's go to Reagan. It, 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 one area, and because you know it, Reagan's the nineteen eighties. Everybody knows that, but it actually that Reagan era started before that, didn't it? I mean, you mentioned the 1960s businesses coming up. Um, let's talk about the Reagan conservative era. Do you think that Reagan ushered it in, or he just carried the torch forward from the 60s? Well, I actually think Reagan's an interesting figure because he becomes a free market conservative even before the 60s, yeah. in the 1950s. And he does so during his time at General Electric. Right. And General Electric, this is a good example of the kind of thing that I talk about throughout the book, but General Electric, when Reagan was there, was a company really devoted to pushing a free market political and economic agenda. It had had a, a large, there was a large strike at the company in 1946, and after that, the company decided that it really needed to get active in politics and also start to try to convince its own employees that the company, not the union, was uh, who really had their interests at heart. And yeah. they barraged the company with propaganda of different sorts. They made people go to classes on company time about the free market. They, you know, they had lots of newspapers and magazines they tried to get people to read. Yeah. And Reagan came to the company during that time and went around giving speeches at his different plants to groups of workers. And it's really during his years there that mm. his ideas, is he starts to kind of, you know, push free market conservative economic ideas. All right. Know. All right. So currently, I want to fast forward to what's going on today. And we kind of touched on this earlier. We're almost out of time. Um, we're finding that conservatives are battling populist socialism in U.S. politics. How do you feel this will play out? Um, again, conservatives, will they come back, a resurgence? or with the socialist programs that we're seeing that are out there, um, really, in some areas, by wildfire, who's going to win this battle? Well, again, I, I wouldn't really call the programs out there socialists, but I think that the, you know, there's a, there's a language today, the New Republic recently had a story saying conservatism is dead, yeah. and uh, there's a sense that the conservative economic agenda has really, you know, that, that what's happening today, the economic crisis, brought about in large part by the deregulation or lack of regulation in the financial market. Yes. Uh, that the, it, it has really discredited these laissez-faire ideas, the mm -hmm. supply-side anti-government program. And so I think it will be hard for conservatives to recover from that in a way. I mean, I think at the same time, I also think the infrastructure and institutions created by the movement still exist business still exercises a lot of power in Washington and will be trying to rein in, um, you know, any kind of challenge right. to its agenda in Kim, the future. So we're out of time. I appreciate your time here today. Kim Phillips Fine is, is the author we're talking with today. The book, name of the book is Invisible Hands, the Making of the Conservative Movement, From the New Deal to Reagan. Kim, we do appreciate your time. Where can we find the book today? Uh, you can get it on Amazon, you can get it at Barnes & Noble, you can find it in many independent local bookstores throughout the country. Fantastic. Head out today, get a copy, everybody. Kim Phillips, fine. Thanks for being with us. Thank you for having me. You're more than welcome.